Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Happy National Poetry Month. Um, I'm so excited to have Tamara Blue with us tonight. Um, it's going to be a fun night, as all my guests are fun. <laughs> and i um, really looking forward to speaking with her and um, just getting to know her a little more and having her share her life with you and also her poetry. So this is going to be a great night. I'm so, 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 so excited. <laughs> and so, yes, I hope everyone's having a great day and had a great weekend. And, um, yeah, this has been a great month of poetry events, just a lot going on. And um, I'm excited to join in on the fun and interviews Tamara Blue. So she should be here any moment. And, um, yeah, let's see what's going on. She's almost here. She's almost here. Let's see. There you are. Yeah, there you are. Oh, I don't know what's going on. That's a little bit of a connection issue, but. There you are. <laughs> I love uh oh. Let's see. Ooh, we're having technical difficulties, but we're going to work this out. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, let's try that one more time. Um, I don't know if you can hear me, Tamara, but I need you to exit out and come back in. Can you do that? Okay, let's do that. There we go. She left and she's going to come back. All right, I'm going to send the invitation and... We're almost there. We, we got this. Hello. 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 There you are. Okay. Is that better? <laughs> How does it sound? You sound good. Okay. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you fine. Sounds good. Okay. Good. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Oh, happy. Thank you. Happy, yes, you're welcome. Happy National Poetry Month. Yay, yay. Yay, happy National Poetry Month to you too, poet. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to go into your bio, and then we'll get started with the questions. And welcome, everybody. Hello, that's watching. So hello, hello. Tamara Blue is the ambassador of joy, singing <laughs> also with the voices of creation. Your favorite cousin and the coolest auntie. I think you're poet extraordinaire, so that's part <laughs> of my mind, yes. And HBO deaf poet known as the first lady. Of a mic and dim lights. Okay. And I was about to say that it's just yes, part of the family of a mic and dim lights, hosting many a time their ladies' night on several, several occasions. So yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. So let's get into it. I'm excited. I'm excited Wait, you're here. Tell me more about your show. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is Digs Into Dreams, and I dig into dreams with various artists of all kinds, poets, you know, musicians, vocalists, 
um, you know, eventually com comedians, I'm waiting for them to commit. I think some of them are like, no, I don't think I could do that. But some are like, well, you know, their schedule's a little, so that's fine. We'll get to them. But the point is, it's supposed to be all artists and, and coaches, even, you know, life coaches, entrepreneurs, because in all coaches, too, I see that they also have their artistic side. They write poetry. They sing also. They do other things besides coaching people. So right. everybody has something artistically inside of them. And I like sharing that magic with people because, of course, the pandemic slowed us down. We couldn't go to open mics. We couldn't, you know, really see each other. So this is a one-on-one -on -one interview to get to know you a little bit more personally and allow you to shine and just share with the world who you are and give your flowers now versus later. So okay. that's what this is about. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'm here to celebrate you. <laughs> How fun. <laughs> yes. I'm excited. I'm nervous. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. It's good. It's all good. No, no, no. Oh my okay, goodness. so let's go with, let's see. When did you first find your passion for singing and also poetry? Ooh. And dancing too, right? Dancing, you also dance. I did dance for a long time. Mm -hmm. I did dance mm -hmm. for a long time. And I also... Um, I also painted for a long time. Oh, okay. Like, so I have paintings around here that are mine. Okay. Um, so, like, I started singing in choir. Okay. So the, wow. Yeah. Well, no, I was in band in the sixth grade, and then I was in choir from like seventh grade all the way to twelfth grade, and in the ninth grade we had to do like an assignment about limericks, Ooh. right? Wow. And we had to write our own with a uh -huh. lesson. You know, a limerick has a lesson in it. Right. And I was like, oh, I love this. So I wrote, right. a, I wrote a bunch of those. Mm -hmm. And then, um, from then, I started writing poems, writing people poems. Mm -hmm. Just like mm -hmm. as my little notes to them, just writing a poem to them. Yeah. Um, and then I, you know, and I was still singing in the choir, and I was dancing. I don't know. So I guess as a teenager. Okay. A teenager, yeah. Awesome. Who are your influences when it comes to writing and musically? Like, who really influences you? Influence. Mm hmm. That's an interesting word, right? Mm hmm. Um. So I don't know if she influenced me. Okay. But I always admire uh, Liana Mataka, who also is formerly Wanda Robinson. Um, she's a poet from the 1960s. Oh, wow. um, and I grew up with her vinyl in my house. Like, we had her vinyl. So I grew mm. up listening to that. Um I also grew up listening to mm -hmm. albums, so I grew up listening to all that. So I don't know if it influenced me because I don't think I write like them or sound like them, but I admired what they were doing and I wanted to keep that going. Right, right. Well, yeah. there's some inspiration, right? There's, yeah, they inspired you to yeah. pursue so, your writing. Yeah, those would be my original, Wanda, Wanda Robinson would be my original, original, like, I felt like, so, so, like, so Facebook started, right? And I get on Facebook, and I'm like, Wanda Robinson, mm -hmm. can't, find can't find her. Then I go into Google, I start searching, she had changed her name, so I found out her new name, and mm -hmm. I found her on Facebook. And like a true stan, I just started being her friend and just like everything she posted, I was like, yeah, that's my girl, ha, ha, ha. yeah, yeah, yeah. And one day she messaged me back and I was mm -hmm. like, Ugh. so one of my goals um, is whenever I ever do a poetry show, a woman's show again, that I'm able to sponsor and host, I want mm -hmm. to be able to pay her to come yeah. and do a virtual, just virtual, like, right. just virtual, but I want, 
y'all for whoever y'all is, right? I want anyone <laughs> who enjoys me to yeah. experience her. Yeah. You know, because it's like, that's who I was listening to when ma that makes me think the way that I think in a writing sense, that makes me hear the different things in writing or even like the, the descriptions and how she described things and how visual it was and to set a whole mood. That's mm. all for her. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Well, then this so, question yeah, was... on Facebook. <laughs> so when I share this, I, when I share it, I'm a tagger because that's like a real stand. Okay, okay, yes. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that is really awesome. So this goes really well with the next question. So this is the thing. Like you were inspired by her, right? But I want you to dig a little deeper in the sense of like what piece of advice would you tell your younger self that you wish you knew? No one's opinions ever really matter. Mm, okay. Ever. That's good. Like, ever. Yes. Ever. Like mm. you can study and master something. This is my opinion. Mm -hmm. Because I really ruined, in my opinion, some of my possibilities in my 20s mm. dealing with other people's opinions because mm. once I let their opinions become important then they yeah. started being a part of my train of thought right and right. so then whether they said the opinion or not I already have it in my mind so I don't even need them to say it because I already have a recording of this random person's opinion Right. Playing in my mind over and over and over. So my subconscious is completely programmed to believe that if I, Tamara, put out a, 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 a song where I'm singing. Right. The whole world would destroy itself and just implode because mm. they, cause they would think I sound so bad or uh, she doesn't sound, you know, whatever I, you know. Right. Because from years of like being in choirs and in high school, the choir shit is competitive, yo. Like, so everybody's not getting a solo, like, uh -huh. and right, everyone's right. Not getting everyone's not getting that shine, right? Yes, so yes. You hear the you hear the opinion. Well, no, you can't. You're not a lead. Mm. You're you're not mm. a lead. You you can't hold it by yourself. Things like mm. that. Or um, in the poetry world, you don't have enough to do a feature. Right. Like, <laughs> right. And then all of a sudden you're like, I don't have enough to do a feature. And right. you're sitting at home with books. Right. This thick. Yeah. Journals on top of journals and yes. journals. But some random person outside said, Oh no, you ain't got enough to do a feature. Yes. Yes. And even though someone else who loves just your, your vibe, your voice is just aligned with you, is like, I want you to feature. Right. Exactly. You're going to let this other person's opinion mm -hmm. play in your head and say, oh, no, no, I'm not ready. So right. I would, that's right. what I would, that's what I would, I would give myself that speech. Yeah. No, and that's <laughs> great advice. See, that's, and the reason why I like that question so much is because, you know, every artist obviously is battled with something that they did not let, they didn't give themselves permission to whatever, basically. Yeah. Because, yeah they were holding themselves back because of somebody either, you know, knocking them down or whatever it is, something came in their way and, or we're too hard on ourselves just because of our path in life and just our families or whatever's going on in our world. But that piece of advice is critical. Every single artist has their own piece of advice. And I love that because I feel what you're doing is impacting someone who is probably in their twenties or even someone who's younger, who's going to hear this and needs to hear that now. So I that's why I, love it. It. I hope you heard it. My I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. But then, like, so here's the flip part of that, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would want to learn that too young. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I understand what you're saying. There is some guidance now. So, like, taking it right. up, right? As right. now I'm a mother. Yeah. There is some guidance that I need to be able to provide to a younger person that will come up as an opinion. So I've been working on how to provide this instruction without it being 
uh, op- so hard and opinion based. Sure. It's not judgy, but at the no. same time, it still sometimes is. And it might just be the facts. Right. But there is a difference between constructive criticism and someone's just opinion that's super harsh. Like, you don't have to take everybody's advice. You can hear what they have to say, but let's just say you write a poem, right? And then someone tells you, oh, you really should take that line out and you should really do this. And But then it's like, wait a minute, that's my poem. I'm like, wait, what, what, why do I got to take that line out? I like that line. I'm like, I like the word. I've edited. This is done. Right. <laughs> exactly. That's the point. So you got to have that, like, it, you know, where you come, you're actually comfortable with yourself enough to say, oh, okay, I'm good with this. I'm not taking so-and-so's advice because they told me to do that. So then maybe the real thing to tell my younger self is to get good with yourself. It's not about other people's opinion because they, they are going to have them and you're going to hear them, but right. you need to be solid in yourself. I say, cause that's what okay. I need right now. Right. You know what I mean, I need to be solid in my word my message my feeling my mood on what i do and absolutely in that solidness of it, it opinions don't shake you so and it's so right. interesting because i can think about like i'm solid on like my parenting pretty solid there right yeah, really. it's not you can't tell me something i'm gonna be like oh maybe i shouldn't i don't know but yeah. there's other areas mm-hmm. especially artistically that I don't feel as solid. Mm. So that's that's definitely what I would tell myself is to get solid early. Don't be in your right. 40s trying to solid, get solid on on something. Be be on the wave by then. I want to be I I wanted to be on the wave right now just floating in like my greatness. But you are great. So that's yeah. not you you are great and and then some. So that's right. not even the right. question. Right. That's not the question or that's not the problem or anything like that. You got to remember, age is just a number. It does not mean anything. It does not define us. Um, it does not define us at all. Because I love reading when I when they show you that little meme, you know, they show you like Michael Jordan at what age he did this. And right, right. Oprah at this age, she was this. And Steve Jobs was this age. Like, I like seeing that because I'm like, okay, these people are now the millionaires and the billionaires and whatever. But they started late. Even Samuel L. Jackson, for crying out loud, at 40 is when he got his like first career like jump in the movies and things were happening at 40. So yeah. so this music that I'm putting so like at it was at 40. It was it was either 40 or 41 is when I joined the choir with Jametta, um mm-hmm. the voices of creation um mm-hmm. and like the choir is just doing so good for wealth. Like it's just filling me up. Right. I'm feeling really, really good on it. So it's just like, it made me want to do my own music and my yeah. own poems and write my own stuff. I also uh, became a past life regression hypnotherapist. Wow. Okay. So like, Check you out. And, a, and a natal birth chart reader. This is all since. Wow. Four. And so wow. Like, I um I know that I have a lot of healing to offer. Yes. And yes. what's funny, because the, the question that you asked, right? I knew that younger. And somewhere in the time of living in this existence, right. I decided like, no, you're not. Right. And so but think about I'm, it. I'm back there now. To know. Right, but think about that. Think about that for a second. Twenty years ago, like it was a different time of world. We didn't yes. have social media like everybody has social media. We had a little bit different kind of energies, and the way people came at you then is different than the way people come at you now. Yes. So it's two different worlds that we're living in. Like, no, it's it's there's different things that we went through twenty years ago yes. that people have no idea that are growing and up. Not, in this- and we keep saying twenty, but girl, we mean in thirty. Because it wasn't the 2000s. It was the 90s. <laughs> it was the 90s. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. I'm about to turn 46 in October. I feel you. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes. I understand. So I'm, I'm really thankful to be there now. Because in that aspect of not just all just my creativity. But like being able to be creative and be imaginative. And use my use my brain. Right. 
got me to be able to go into hypnosis, to mm. go into natal birth chart reading, to right. to to want to learn anything. It's right. because I, I, I had already activated this brain to be creative yes. and to be working and to be thinking and to be moving. So Right. I'm right. This. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> And and that's the thing. That's the beauty of being an artist. It, it never really stops. It's always cultivating in different ways. It's always, you Showing know, being nurtured. Up. It shows up differently. It shows up and nurtures you. You're nurturing it and it's nurturing you at the same time artistically because mm -hmm. it helps feed your spirit the more you tap into your artistic skills. You know, we're not here for nine to five. We do nine to five to, you know, pay bills and do whatever. But at the same time, you're really here to fulfill your artistic gifts. And so here's what's interesting in that. Um, I believe part of my artistic gift is uh, spreading joy. Just sharing yes. joy, yes. joy, feeling it. Um, I want you to think about me and giggle and remember a joyous moment. I yes. do that at my nine to five all the time. That's good. And it was enlightening to see that because there was a time where I was just nine to five. I was working like it was about that my mind was focused on it and I had to step back from it and realize that I was still being myself and I was still using my my heart and being creative and being an open person just in this environment so even right. if you at work all the time don't lose who you are right you write about that I know you're right about that yeah you know I find that it's I know my I'm able to use my artistic gifts at work at times which is good but also, I do know that, you know, there's a different side of me that is there, too. So it is what it is. It just, it's complicated. But, but at the same time, it's complicated. I know. It is. It's complicated. But I do know that God has me there for a reason and at this moment in time. And I know why pursuing artistically my gifts are important to me. That's what feeds my spirit. That's what allows me to be who I need to be. So, yeah. And I, I mean, you know. It's, this interview is not about me, but the point is, real quick, last week I celebrated my, I call this my second birthday. Yeah, because, it was an accident. Yes, correct, correct. So that's 38 years ago, and so I feel like I'm here on borrowed time. And so, therefore, why, and I'm with you on the whole joy thing and encouragement. I feel that's my purpose, too. That's what I like to do with my friends. That's why I life coach people. I want to be that voice. I want to be their cheerleader. Like, you know, let's do this. Like tap into what you need to tap into because you should not let things stop you from achieving what you're here for, your purpose, whatever that purpose is. Like, obviously everyone has a different purpose, but that's my, like my actual, like passion is to help people go into what they need to go into and start open up the roadblocks and those walls and go in and like, let's, let's move that out. What's what's going on? Who's stopping you? Because there's always someone there. It's not just a wall that you built up, but there's people that help you build that wall. So who was it? Yeah. Let's talk about that when we yeah. get into it. Yeah, that's real. So yeah. I'm with you on the joy. Joy is real. You need to feed yeah. the joy, and yeah, pray for joy. Like joy is important. Yes, that's cool. Yes. So now let's see. Let's see. And it's cat. Okay, don't read the comments. Just be in the interview. <laughs> okay so this is one of my favorite questions too what would you do if you were given 10 million dollars let's say someone hears you at the next open mic this this entrepreneur man woman whatever she's got 10 million dollars she sees you and she's like that's the woman i want to invest in she's going to give you 10 million dollars what would you do with it what are the ties? I mean, I would, I would immediately. There would be no ties. She just likes what you do. She says, I'm going to give you this check. It's $10 million. What would you do with it? I would leave America. <laughs> okay. So, but I think that's the first thing. Okay. I would leave America. Um, I would just buy some, I would buy land. I don't know. Like, I would buy a lot of, I would own some shit. Or maybe I would buy California. Could I afford California with $10 million? I don't, know. I don't think like, so. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's so, you challenged me because, like, you know how, as a, um, as a, so I also consider myself a master manifester. Um, yes. But in, in being that, you have to be able to let your mind be imaginative, right? 
girl, mm -hmm. I ain't never really thought about $10 million. Um, okay, let me think about it. A house in Pasadena is a million dollars. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I probably wouldn't leave America. Okay. <laughs> I probably okay. buy, I would definitely buy a decent piece of land in Cameroon along the coast um, Ooh, okay. that I would be able to build up as a place for people to come and visit and learn about the, the slave trade that happened out of there. Mm -hmm. So many of us came mm. to Cameroon. Mm. Um, I probably want to do something to try to help the Cameroon economy, some something like that. I definitely, right. so now, I definitely know that I will be considered Lady Bountiful some way, someday in my life. Okay. Maybe I will be a woman that is a super philanthropist. I'm going to help people. So like I have the ideas of the money. I don't really know exactly, but if people sent me a request and let me know what they needed, I would definitely be pouring into people. Um, I'd right. probably buy a school. I'd mm -hmm. probably buy a school. Right. I'd probably buy a farm, like a whole mm -hmm. farm and a solar mm -hmm. farm. Mm -hmm. um, I'm definitely going to have a lake house. Oh, nice. I'm definitely yeah. going to have a lake house. Like, just completely yeah. off the grid, completely a thousand percent fully sustainable. My own right. water hole. Several, yes. Several generators. Um, plenty right. of foliage, high trees, enough to hide away from people, probably up in a mountain, but still with a lake. Something like yes. that. Yes. Okay. Well, I love it. That's awesome. Well, you know, keep in mind as the manifestor that you are, what you're saying, I'm going to help people. You're already helping people. Yeah. So it's That's just that I you're going to have to switch it up in there because I was like, oh, I'm saying this wrong. <laughs> You are saying that wrong. I was going to have to correct you now because that's important, sis, because, you know, I already, I believe in what you're doing. and you, That's who you are. From the day that I met you, your persona on the mic was powerful. Like, I just felt your energy. You were just so, like, empowering and encouraging. And, and I was like, wow, look at her. Like, you know what I mean? Because I, I don't, I didn't know you, right? I just met yeah. you. And it was like ladies night at Mike and Dim Lights. And you'd always give us wonderful gifts. Like I told you, I remember... The plant you gave us, that was the nicest thing. I was like, oh, my gosh, I got a plant. That's so nice. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's so thoughtful. So that's uh, inside of you, who you are. It's continual. You yeah. just have to look at it. You're you're continually climbing your mountain well, as a gift. Ashe, I, I received that. And I know I know it's true. But I think it's when I started thinking about the $10 million I was trying to – my mind was so many places. But right. I, I'm definitely – just going to keep whatever, whatever money I have, I'm just going to continue to be me. Giving. A giver. Yeah. Continue. I would, you know, oh, you know what I would do? So just on some imagination, right? So just on some shit. I would have my 50th birthday party. Okay? Okay. And I would have Anita Baker perform, a Amelia okay. Ruth perform, um, and New Edition perform. Hey. Hey. So, Yeah. And we would have fried lobster. Okay. <laughs> or fried, or fried, cat, fried lobster or fried crab legs. Okay. Like that. And then maybe a whole bunch of veggie stuff. But really, I would have that concert. Like, I like oh. live music. But, like, for my birthday, I want that concert. Right? Absolutely. Like 10 mil. I could, I, with my 10 mil. When I have my yeah. 10 mil, that's not, a, that's not a hard concert to pull off. No. Absolutely not. And no. maybe... I think we should do it in South Africa and fly everybody out. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. Well, remember, you can always invest and you can make that money grow. So, you know, there's you're investing, oh, yes, in, schools, yes, I never you're investing in your schools, you're investing in your farms, you're doing your, you know, your house. Yes. But you can keep, in, you know. Continuing. Because that's all money does is flow. That's right. That's right. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's see, let's see. Let's go into. <laughs> Do you ever have secrets in your poems that are specifically just for you that you kind of putting them in there? No, they're usually not for me. They're usually for somebody else. <laughs> okay. 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 No, no, no. Wait, let me think. Let me think. Let me think. I mean, okay. 
not being funny. So my first responses are always funny. But when I sit back with the question, I'm an adult. <laughs> <laughs> okay, queen. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I definitely have some pieces of poems that are specific to either my childhood, my growing up, my okay. understanding. Okay. Um, there's a, and I can't even remember the line in the poem exactly, but there's one of my poems where I say something along the line of hiding um, in a closet, like two kids hiding in two, you know, the, they're like these two things, I think I, whatever I, the things I was talking about at the time, they're hiding in a closet mm. um, away from kitchen spoons, brooms and spoons. Mm. And so for me, that's what people used to get popped with. Oh, Kitchen wow. spoons, brooms, and spoons. Wow. And you would hide. Because, mm. mm. like, if it's, um, if it's, like, a grandma that's whooping everybody, oh. you just kind of move. You just <laughs> right, right. And then right. she thinks she already got you or whatever. Like, so that visual, I was like, people are going to think that's crazy. I left it in there, and it went on to live its life in, in the poem. But I, it was, it was a, that one definitely was a personal visual. Okay. Um, okay. There was another poem where I talked about walking home and some of the things that I passed were actual things that I passed during that event. And mm -hmm. it was like, just to really solidify what the poem was about. Cause you know, ain't nothing worse than going back and finding a poem years later and having no clue what it's about you're like damn i needed a little i needed an index on the side like what happened like who right. was i talking who about? about like this metaphor is so encrypted who mm. is right 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 that makes sense that does that's it's some little cliff notes this is <laughs> that time he said this and dropped you off and you had to go here and right uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> who was that <laughs> <laughs> who's the one person living or dead you want to spend the day with and where would you go okay i think now, just where my head is at, mm -hmm. I would want to um, spend the day with Dolores Cannon, who is a, the hypnosis that I studied under. She's passed on. Oh, okay. Um, but I would just want to be somewhere where she was comfortable to talk to me for as long as she could. Mm, okay. So okay. Where, whatever that would, whatever space that would be. So if we need to sit in her living room where she could feel comfortable talking to me for 15 to 18 hours and just mm. pour, pouring knowledge into me, mm. then I would, that, I would do that. That's just, that's honestly what first came to my mind. I thought about like saying, oh, a grandmother or something, but yeah, it seems sentimental and it seemed mushy, like, oh yeah. But no, like I would really love to be able to study under the woman that I learned under and that I enjoyed learning under in the living. I studied under <laughs> at, on a on a uh, recording, mm -hmm. so it would be nice to study under her in the living and ask questions and get answers, and really like be developed. Ooh. Okay, yeah, or Doctor Sebi. Either oh one. wow, that'd be awesome. Either wow. either either one same vibe. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah. So, top three. This is the fun facts. Top okay. three favorite genres of music, foods, colors, and under foods. So regular foods, of course, you know, your main course, and then desserts. So that's four. Okay. Yes. Top three. Okay. Top three music genres. I don't know what genre you call. Let um, me <laughs> it's like Are we cheating? <laughs> no, so, I'm not cheating. <laughs> no, um, 
and I don't even know what they put it under. I think they put it under mantras or frequency or, oh. or frequency okay. vibes or something. Right, I, right. I listen to a lot of the beautiful chorus mm. and uh, Chris and Tibbs and mm. um, Londrell. I also don't pay attention to the names of the artists that I listen to. Let's just be honest. I just start liking songs and then I have right. a playlist and I let the playlist yeah. just play. So I might know <laughs> all the words to your song on my Spotify, but I do not know who sings it because I'm driving. I'm not right. looking at the things. <laughs> Uh-oh, I feel so you. That's why I, don't know the, the, I, was like, I don't know what genre that is. So, like, I listen to a lot of that. Um, then I listen to, I guess, in stark contrast, a lot of 90s hip-hop, underground hip-hop, um, backpack hip-hop, West Coast hip-hop, like, rap. Boom, bap, rap. I listen to a lot of okay. rap. <laughs> right. Um, awesome. Oh, and then I guess, gospel or reggae like gospel and oh. reggae are tied yes yes so is alternative r&b mm. because i listen to uh, yeah i don't know there's nothing none of i didn't give you three but that's what i listen to any of those are <laughs> any of those are my vibe right but then i okay. also like folk too like i'll listen to tracy chapman oh i love and, tracy um chapman. alanis morissette oh yeah I, i'm really into lyrics Yes. So what I listen to, like my number one genre is lyrics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right. Some depth. There has yeah. to be some depth. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Okay, and then colors. Mm -hmm. Currently, I would say orange, white, and green. Orange, white, and green. Okay. I like it. What else? Food? Okay, food. So in foods, your regular, you know, favorite main courses, and then desserts. Three and three. It's so interesting. Like, so my, I guess, I mean, I'm from California. So you know what my answer is? Tacos. Tacos. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Yeah, tacos. <laughs> and by tacos, I mean anything in the taco. Anything in the taco. Like, um, I went to this restaurant the other day and they ordered crispy cauliflower tacos. Oh, yum. I've had that. It's good. See, and I didn't. I was like, "This is a lot. I'm not getting that taco." But I did get it. I did get an Impossible Taco where they took the Impossible uh, burger. Yes. Okay. And made a taco out of it. So I right. had that. So anything taco. Um. Then from there, so I guess I don't have favorite meals. So I do like tacos. I do like tacos. I can always eat tacos. Other than that, I'm pretty not hungry a lot like <laughs> okay I, don't, I like salads yeah yeah i mm -hmm. like salads i like crunchy food like so that's the yeah. thing i like crunchy foods i like textured i like textured foods mm -hmm. uh, or like a lot of flavor like indian food african oh, yeah. food mm -hmm. um, that kind of stuff so i don't okay. have any favorites i'm not picky i'll eat what you put on my plate that's nice. Um, <laughs> That's a very nice, nice. Yeah, like yeah. for the most part, I'll eat with you. If you ask me, like, oh no, I don't want pork, you know, so I won't eat the pork, you know. Right, right, right. Uh, but, but for the most part, I'm gonna eat it. I'm not listening, and probably I ain't gonna even lie. Even if it is pork, if your mom serves it to me, I'm gonna eat it. I'm right. from California. I was raised around a lot of like Latina people and Filipino people and like African people and right. Right. people, people, and right. people's grandmas do not want you not eating the food. That part right there. Yes. Yeah. You, that's part of the love. You got to come yeah. and you gotta eat. If you don't eat, it's rude. It's rude. <laughs> it's rude. Rude. I know. I know. I um, understand. <laughs> So that's my foods. I like all the foods, but then none of them at the same time. <laughs> never, it's so funny because I'm never really hungry. I'm always picky, like, uh, what should I eat? What mm. should I eat? But if you fry it and put it between a tortilla, then I... Okay. I'm, yeah. Um, so for dessert, chocolate. Okay. That's chocolate good. cake. What chocolate, kind of chocolate? Lava cake, <laughs> chocolate lava cake. Chocolate Ooh, cake with chocolate yum. frosting. Chocolate mm. chip cookies. Mm, yeah. 
ice cream with a lot of stuff in it. I don't know yes. why I like stuff. I like textures. I understand. I feel you. I feel you. I understand. Um, what kind of ice cream? What's your favorite like flavor? My current favorite flavor is chocolate malted crunch from Thrifties. Oh wow! Oh, Thrifties has the bomb ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's good stuff. <laughs> but then again, like it's another thing that I like it, but I don't. You know what I do get right now? Um, the it's 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 <gasps> an oatmeal sandwich. Girl, that's so my favorite. Oh my god, I love that. Love that. I will yes. say. So I guess if I keep it to right now, that's yeah. what it is. Because yes. When we're at the store, I'm like, oh, get that box because like yes. to like eight yes. or something. Yeah. Only three in there. I know. Yeah. 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 It's it's. I love it. Some it's it. Yep. Mm -mm. What else was the question? That was it. It was, food, it was yeah. Music. Three, three, and three. You 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 hit them all. So did you give me three? You gave me the chocolate, chocolate. all kinds chocolate. of chocolate, chocolate, and then you gave me ice cream. <laughs> and then it's what it. was the third one? Nothing in particular. We just we'll just stick with that. <laughs> no, okay. We're just leaving it this yeah. <laughs> separate. Mark. Okay. It's like it's 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 its own separate one. It's like it's, it's separate. I should have said it's it's. And then chocolate <laughs> cake, and then ice cream. With okay, th th there we go. I'm clear. It's, it's all makes sense now. <laughs> well, thank you so much for answering my questions. Now, I would love to hear, and I'm sure everybody else would love to hear some of your wonderful poetry or songs or whatever you want to share with us. I don't even know what to do. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so wait. Let's say this. When you first was like, oh, because let me, t I'm not gonna, so I'm not gonna hold you. I'm definitely gonna do a poem. <laughs> but, okay. you know, the stage is mine. So, <laughs> I for sure thought we were talking about dreams. That's why I never even asked. You. Oh, okay. Okay. That's why I never even asked you what it was about. Because I was like, oh, we're definitely talking about dreams. <laughs> right. Right. We're definitely just gonna be building about dreams and like, that's it. That's it. And then I was like, let me go and look at some of these other shows. <laughs> you were cheating. Okay. <laughs> and I looked and I was like, oh. What? They doing poems. Um, yeah. So, absolutely. Songs, poems, whatever the person wants to do, you know? So I'll read one and then I'm going to, I'll do one of the old ones. I'll read one new one and I'll do an old one. Oh, wait. Okay. I've never read this out loud, so. Oh, look. Of course, Steve on ass here with his ears out. Got his ears out. <laughs> <laughs> They're here to support. It's all good. Oh, because no one's opinion matters. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but remember, that was the top of our conversation. Today. Yes, I remember. I remember. I remember. <clears throat> so, imagine you could imagine any life for yourself, any feeling or experience. What would you imagine? Me? Imagine me thick, well-known, smooth skin with fresh food in my garden and spring water from my lake at the foot of the deck of my cabin of my cabin home. Dreams come true. Tattoos on magazine covers, survivor's favorite cousin, call me fan favorite. Body so flexible, splits and high kicks, back bends and windmills, a dancer. I've always been. I receive clear and direct communication from my higher self, I say, and I know what to do with it. Lady mm -hmm. Bountiful, abundance of wealth, a plethora of resources and advice, my heart speaks to yours. And have you, for, my heart speaks to yours. Have you forgotten how to imagine? Mm. Have you forgotten your imagination? Mm. Did you leave it in your Google inbox or store mm -hmm. it on the cloud? The imagination, mm. imagination is the key to opening your life. Your mm. soul is trying to talk to you. Your spirit speaks through imagination. Mm. Visualize your thoughts. Make it mm. real. Feel mm. it. Real. Mm. Oh, that was dope. I love that. 
Oh, wait, Yay, wait. naps and claps and everything. Oh my goodness, and I love so, that. Um, that poem is a poem. And that's, there is a song to, so with me doing um, past life regression, hypno, hypnotherapy and learning about the subconscious and learning about the power that we really do have to take our programming back, for lack mm -hmm. of better words. Mm -hmm. The music that I'm putting out, I'm, uh, I intend for it to help us get our frequencies back, get our mm -hmm. vibrations back. Right. So even on the simple thoughts, the song that I put out is just a repetitive kind of mantra of telling us to visualize your thoughts. So that song, Just Imagine, is available, and it kind of goes with the poem. Mm, I love that. Yeah. I love that. I can hear you, like, seriously, like, on major platforms sharing that piece because we need more people to encourage people to tap into their dreams, tap into their lives. Their thoughts. Their thoughts. Like their imagination, their thoughts. Um, Critical. It, it, it's so important. And I can say, like, it's off, It's often um, that we fall into, like, a writer's block. Yep. It's the same thing as we say, oh, I don't dream. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and maybe you, and, and so I keep telling my son, I was like, you don't remember your dream. Don't right. cancel your dreams. Right. You dream. Mm -hmm. You don't recall them in the morning. That's exactly. all. But yeah. you do dream. So yes. we have to practice visualizing. We have to practice using our brain in a different way to imagine ourselves in a different place doing a different thing right now. Yes. Yes. Right now. Because yes. right now is literally the only time we have is just right. now. So exactly. be all right here and just do it. Right. Right. So, yeah. I'm really excited about that kind of stuff. So I'm glad you like that poem. I love it. That's beautiful. Yeah, she just finished writing it at six fifteen when you told her <laughs> that she had to do a poem. <laughs> awesome. You go, girl. <laughs> that's, that's what's up. <laughs> okay. Um, so okay. the last time I tried to do this poem in front of people, I didn't remember it. But I think now I practiced it. So I'm gonna do. I want to be a poet. Oh, okay. Because it also. It's also just hella fitting because the poem is, um, oh, this is 2022. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that poem, 18 years old. Yeah, okay. 18 years old. Oh, wow. And if, if I stop and tell you how manifestation has worked, baby, mm -hmm. We'd be here all day. Mm. We'd be here all day. We should have we should have started the interview with me doing that poem and then talking about how manifestation how manifestation just happened. Because I repeated this poem for years and years and years. And I can't think of many of the things in it that haven't happened. Mm. So. Well, next time you start the interview with anybody, tell them, hey, I got something I gotta share with you. Flip it on. Oh, let's go. Flip it oh, on. I'm down. You could have done it, girl. I wouldn't have stopped you. <laughs> I didn't even think about it till just right now. Uh, <laughs> I want to be a poet. Even though sometimes when I think about it, really, I don't care about poetry. I'm only doing this as a way to speak to my community. Because I want to go to youth groups and tell them about the harm that drugs can do. I want to tell them about my two aunties and their addictive personalities. I want to talk about my bad habits and I want to hear theirs so that maybe together we can heal theirs. I want to inspire art, mm. song, dance, mm. rhyme, whatever. I want to inspire life. And since art is life, I want to live mine to the fullest. I want to stop a lot of the nonsense, but make sure to keep a few drops of it. I mm. want to take classes so that I can teach classes. I want to be the one to tell that teenage pregnant girl that everything is going to be okay. But I want to mean it. I want to never have to whisper. I want to always be heard. I want to stand on top of mountains and shout. Pay attention to your words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's as far as I can remember. That's a nice mm -hmm. time though. Okay. That's, that's I'll tell you. Listen, and I stopped beating myself up about it. I stopped beating myself about it. The poem is almost 20 years old. Tamara, I don't have to still know every word. And what happens is as a, just as a, as a, a human 
person having this experience, when I'm doing the poem, I start thinking about those things. Right. And so for me to have said 18 years ago to I said that poem to thousands of people, girlfriend. Mm. I, and it's all over YouTube. It's mm. shared. Mm. And to tell all those people to pay attention to their words, because I knew that you could speak healing over yourself. I yes. knew that you yes. could speak wealth into your life. I knew that with the proper conviction that all of the healing was right there on the tongue. However, yes. I still mm. spent another 15 or so years speaking bullshit over my own life. Mm, mm. so I that's what stopped me because I know better now like even though that was me then telling me and everybody else it didn't hit until mm. now like I do want to stand on top of mountains and I do want to shout pay attention to your words because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. pay attention to your thoughts yes <laughs> yes 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 no no I received your message I receive it because it's so true yeah. And that's the thing as, a, as artists, even we are chosen artists, I would say. Let's put it that way, because there's a bunch of artists, but yeah. not everybody is out to help other people. There are artists that are out to help themselves. Let's just keep that Absolutely. 100. Right. I be so, jealous of them sometimes. <laughs> no, I'm not jealous of them. I don't Because you know what? Honestly, when I see that energy, when I pick it up and realize that that person is just in it for themselves, then I'm like, oh, I'm good. I need yes. to stay away from you because that energy is not my energy. It's not my, you're not my it's not, No, it's <laughs> not. So, and that's not your vibe either. So, uh -huh. and you know, definitely give props to Cat too. I mean, I mean, seriously. And C Bone Joe's like, these are people. We all have heart. We have heart. We have heart. We have heart to help people from all the things we've gone through. We want to help other people get to where they need to go. Yeah. So there's a difference. That's when that you're... dim light shit too. So like before the interview is over, let's talk about poetry months. So we'll talk about a mic and dim lights. Yeah. And, um, how lately, because I never really get to just talk about a mic and dim lights and just speak on mm -hmm. um, my experience and my thoughts of it all, right? Yeah. I think that the venue the people and the events probably mm -hmm. saved me from so much because I was single. Um, mm. My mom had just been diagnosed with colon cancer, so she wasn't working. Wow. Um, I was going to school and I had been with this guy that was like, he was cool, but I had, my mindset was, was kind of off mm. for lack of better words on mm. my self-esteem on how I seen myself, how I viewed myself. Right. And looking back at who I was then, had I been around the wrong group of men or people, I could have been really taken advantage of really hurt, um, really screwed around and just uh, messed up in general. And a Mike and Dim Lights, Best Kept, JB, uh, Ghetto Spear, Leon, um, Jarens. Nobody tried to hurt me, you know, like right. I was able to go into this and be in my art form and have people that cheered my art form when I didn't even realize it was an art form yet. Like I was still a B girl. I was just dancing and I came mm -hmm. over here cause I was afraid to rap. <laughs> that was really mm -hmm. it. Like I was afraid to rap. So I was like, I'll go to the poetry thing and I'll, I'll read like that. And um, I, I, I imagine sometimes what would have happened had I just been a lonely 20 year old girl wandering the streets of Los Angeles and Hollywood Right. With a pretty face, a small waist, and a big butt. Right. Right. And naive, for right. lack of better words. I was, the same heart was always there. So there right. were no warning signs and like, just kind of gullible. Because you would, you ask people, I was at every venue. When it got time to start going to venues, when I found out about poetry, I was at every venue, every mm -hmm. night. It could be five nights a week. I was going because I mm. knew it was a safe place. Like I had found something where I could go and be comfortable and just like share my true heart and my true self. And somebody would 
hear me. They didn't have yeah. to say, oh, I agree, or yeah, I'm that kind of person too. Just mm -hmm. hear me. Yeah. Yeah, so dim lights, starting there was the best. Mm. Being able to start there was the, the best. I, was, I didn't get uh, competitive with it. Um, I never, like, yeah, the ego part didn't come in for a very, very, very long time. In, in that like it just wasn't that like I got with a group of people that wanted to write poetry share poetry and then go into jails and share poems with youth that were in jails mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I'm in my early 20s in my young part of my poetry career and I'm teaching young men who may not ever get out of jail right um what yeah I was teaching them Somewhere right now, in prison or not in prison, there's a young person that's probably in their 25s to 30s right now and remembers Miss Tamara's laugh. Yeah. I fucking yeah. love that, yo. Like, yeah. and that's from Dim Lights. And so that's a part, like, whether I found them or they found me, it all kept my divine purpose of spreading love, joy, through creativity, through these words, through my voice, kept right. me in alignment. So even when I felt like I was wavering, I still found myself right with the right people. Even this okay. interview, I be saying no to stuff all the time. I said yes. <laughs> I appreciate that like, so much. Know. I've been asked to feature. I said no. I'm not featuring. Uh, I've been asked to do do a poem on somebody's songs. I'd be like, yeah, I'm gonna try, and then it just don't, it don't, it don't line up. So I'm thankful for you because this oh, up. Thank you so much. It means the world that you said yes. I mean, I was so <laughs> excited, especially for National Poetry Month. I was like, I'm gonna ask Tamara. I'm gonna ask her, and let's see. She's if she says yes. If she says yes, that'd be awesome. So no, it, it's you're a gift. I truly appreciate you saying yes because uh, so I was only gonna do for two this. for this month. I was only gonna I'm do so two. Thankful that you got to that we got to do it, that you talked to me because. I needed to talk about poetry. Mm. Um, I have been spending a lot of time talking about um, singing mm. because I sang for so long before and then I did this chunk of poetry and then I went into singing. But like some people might even remember when I used to sing before my poems come through original poetry. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Ooh. So, but either way, Oh, PC Bone. Um, but either way, it was like, it was, it, it really made me part of who, not gonna say who I am, but like just being allowed to cultivate my own imagination and my own voice mm -hmm. and being in a poetry community that didn't tell me how we should sound. Like, I don't know if you've ever noticed. There's some cities you can go to and like all of the poets will sound the right the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that lovely it. lovely cadence. That. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, ooh. But I don't have I don't think that we have that at Dim Light. I know I that so. everybody has a few carbon copies over the years. And I'm flattered. I wish they, I'm flattered that I'm, I also, no, I'm not flattered. There's a, there's a few people that got my, that copied a couple of cadences of mine and I'll be like wanting to really call them out. <laughs> awesome. But I'm not petty no more. <laughs> oh, what's, you said Picasso. I thought he was leaving. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I, yeah. No, absolutely. Um, yeah, I I definitely wanted to hear you sing, but I wouldn't put that on you if you didn't feel comfortable doing it. What? No, if you yeah, we already talked about that. You can find it on Spotify. Okay, there <laughs> we go. That's fine. That's oh, totally fine. Oh, but no. Okay, boom, 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 boom. Want to see me sing <laughs> in May? Okay. Um, I have shows. I yes, have bring on the promotion, girl. <laughs> Uh, I'm not good with very many dates, so just follow okay. me if you're on okay. here. Um, okay. Also, follow the choir. The choir is the Voices of Creation. That's where that's primarily where I, that's where I sing. That's who I sing with. That's what I 
very, very proud of. And like, um, so we have a show May 7th. We have a show May 14th. And okay. I want to say the 20th. And all of them are free shows. All of them are in the Los Angeles area. Um, okay. So as I get more information, I'll share them. Yeah. Also, for myself, my musical offerings, every full moon, I release a song. Oh, wow. Um, so that's just been this year, and it's only been three so far. So so Ooh. we're still looking, right? So right. I released three songs so far, um, all on the same vibe that I was talking about earlier, um, so somewhat hypnotic, um, somewhat soothing, mm -hmm. and trance-ish. Like, I really want you to forget how long you had it on repeat. Wow. That's what I want. For it to mm. smoothly go on and on and on. And mm. one of the songs is Just Keep Breathing. And mm. um, I think about that when we're going through like trauma or stress or for my kids who the voices of creation. The voices of creation. Sorry. But like I'm thinking about like my kids, like they're athletes. Sometimes when the race is tough and they're running, they stop breathing. Mm. You know? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. just that reminder, just keep breathing. Just keep breathing. Just keep right. breathing. Right. And that's what the song is. I have a couple of other words in there, but the most of the song is telling you just keep breathing. For when you are so upset and you get in your car and you're about to drive, don't drive yet. Mm, yes. Listen to this song and just yes. keep breathing. Mm. Like the, I'm I'm releasing these offerings out on the new on the uh, full moons and I feel like they're intentional even mm -hmm. if I don't know the full intention, but I'm mm -hmm. completely going with spirit. I'm mm. completely going God, you know, God led. Like I know the next song that's going to come out. Right. I haven't written it. It's not recorded, but I know what it has to feel like. Mm, yes you know and we have other ones recorded but i'm still like no we have to record another one shout out to my husband <laughs> shout out to my husband uh, mr abstract butterfinger he does all the production for all of my music right now awesome um, and so that's all on spotify but just okay. follow me here on instagram i'm not shy i talk to everyone and i share what's up yeah that's so awesome so awesome you are the greatest. <laughs> you are. You are. Right back at you. Oh, thank you. No, I, I appreciate just the love in your heart, you know, how fun spirited you are and and just that you are God led, you know, and that's obvious. It's very you can see that in you. It's it's a beautiful thing. And it, it shines through your smile, it shines through your just your energy, your heart. You you've got that good intention. And it's it's wonderful to experience. So hey, every time I've gotten to see you on my condemnments, because that's usually when I see you. You know, it's, I know. I didn't yeah. to go this month, but um, I've been trying. But next time I'm gonna have to get out to it. It was in Pomona, so it was in Claremont, uh, the Benton Museum. Yes. Oh, so okay. yeah, yeah, pretty close, pretty close. Just oh, kind yes. of around the corner. Yes. You missed me. I just did a poem. But that's okay. This will be fully recorded, and I oh, will. Yeah. It's gonna go to YouTube. So oh, I I, yes, oh, and I know I'll be able to you can share. It. Yes, my it's YouTube. To blow up. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Wait, <laughs> wait. Like, like, how come this man walked up to me on the at the fair, and he liked my hat, and he took a picture, and he was like, "I'm gonna put you on YouTube. You're gonna be famous." Okay. And I was like, "Here's the. I'm gonna let you end this show. I know it's supposed to be over." But, oh, okay, okay, good. You're so, good. Take your time. Um, so he he's like, you're gonna. He's like, I'm gonna put you on YouTube. You're gonna be famous. And I just looked at him and I said, I'll be famous, but I don't know if it's from YouTube. <laughs> and what's funny about that is, for the last maybe three years, I've been wearing this hoodie that says "Famous Black Woman" that I got from Alayo Base, uh, Alayo Waist Beads. She, mm. does, she sells waist beads and she also was selling these hoodies. Mm. And I get the clown, I'm like, why you got that hoodie on? Like, what is it? She was like, girl, it's a manifestation. Mm. And I was like, 
Mm. Yo, let's really think about that, right? Right, right? Every person that looked at me read famous black woman and made mm. eye contact with me. Their mental right. thought, right. famous black woman, and looked at me. I was like, yes. oh, oh, I see you. Yes. And so then I just started wearing it. And then in wearing it all the time, people started just calling me that, like at the mm -hmm. track meets. They're like, mm -hmm. go to the famous black woman and uh, you can get your raffle tickets. And I'm like, yeah, that's me. Yes, that's right. That's right. <laughs> so it's a total manifestation. It's hilarious. That's awesome. And it should be that way. Yeah. And it is because, and, and when we think about it, even on a deeper level, we are famous in the Lord. Because, you know, we're royalty. So we are. God made us that way. That's we're right. intended to be that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is so awesome. What a great <laughs> conversation. I told you, we were going to have some fun. Yeah, I told you. Cool. I was surprised you didn't send me the questions. No. <laughs> I don't send anybody the questions. <laughs> we just go with the flow. <laughs> That's why it's more fun that way. <laughs> I so appreciate you. Thank you so much for being here and digging into your dreams with me and sharing who you are because, you know, you truly are a light and loving soul. And I'm glad I was able to hear your story and learn more about you and have other people that haven't heard you also hear about you. So this is exciting. Um, definitely wanted to celebrate you as a person, as a woman, and just as a queen that you are. So thank you for being you and being on my Dig Into Dream series. So thank you, thank you. You are very welcome. I had a great time. Thank you for asking me. You are so welcome. Bye, <laughs> well, everybody. Yes, oh, wait, yes. How's my daughter say like and subscribe? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Egyptian Princess 8 YouTube. Yes, it will yes. be on there shortly. And yes, um, I'm so excited, though. But thank you so much. Blessings okay. to you and your family. Thank and you. of course, we'll follow you with all your upcoming shows and, and things coming up. Hopefully yes. I can make it to one of your shows. That'd be awesome. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. I'll send you the yeah. information. Awesome. All right. Yes. Peace and love, everyone. Good night, everyone. Happy National Poetry Month.